G'day, how you going? I'm Ian April, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach you beginners how to paint in acrylic and just to let you know that you can do it because this is another one of my free gifts to you. There's the size of my canvas, it's up on the screen and I'll also have the colours going up the screen that I'm going to use in this tutorial today. It's a beginner's tutorial and if you're a bit more advanced you can add your own touches to it as well because it's all about the layer and the colours and the vibe of it all, okay? So let's get on over here and get right into this vibe. Okay, way down here is my horizon area level, okay? Right down there, it's not in the middle, it's not way up here. It's down there, because we're pretty much down on ground level looking at this area. Now I've got a bit of mid ground, and it's going above and below the horizon line. I might have something here, but this is a lot closer, so definitely do not have that line flat, because it'll look wrong, it'll look like the water's there and the, the land's like that. You've got to bring this around. We're going to have beautiful trees here, something poking out and something hanging off shot and a beautiful sky. Now you can make a big mountain here if you want, but I want to do a sky. So down here I've got my soft body titanium white and I'm going to mix that with the clear medium retarder. So there's my horizon line. I'll get it to there and then just get it all slopped into the rest of the top half of the canvas so as I can get my sky colors merging and blending so soft and beautiful like a pretty much real looking photo painting if we can get it that's what we want to go for I'll, I don't know why when I do a sky I want a real vibe about me sky I don't want it looking cartoony I want it to look a bit real and I want that realness full of absolute bullshit I'm just going to stroke that left and right and get it nice and thin now that needs to stay wet so I can get my sky happening on there okay I'm going to show you how to do that now down here I've got my mid-tone grey and I want to add a little a bit of quinacridone magenta till I get that, I like to call it a polluted horizon line. You get this, don't put too much in it, okay? Now this is going to lighten up when I hit that white colour on the canvas as well, so keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that your acrylic paints do dry darker as well. And from the horizon, whether you see it or not, I want this all the way down the bottom. I'm going to push it in, push it in and then just bring it up till it stops. So about there. Now back down on my palette, I've got Cerulean Blue. I've cleaned that brush out so as it's not uh, contaminated. And we just wanna put this from the top of the painting now. Now this is also gonna lighten when it hits that white color on the canvas so it's not too cartoony. If I put it on there like that, it's gonna be a cartoon colory sky and I don't want that. So starting from the top, I'll put this on, get the top going, and then just start bringing that down. And if you feel you've got to crisscross your strokes, like I'm starting to do now, do that. Push the paint where you want it before you get too deep into that horizon colour. There we go. Stroking it left and right now, all the way across the canvas. Don't be shy to go all the way across. And be firm and direct with your strokes. Now I can see a bit of a line there. I don't want that, so I want to kind of hinder that pull those darker bits down a bit more and I want to control what I'm putting on my canvas. Don't just hope for the best because you're a beginner. You control what you put on there. There we go. I'm going to come down a bit more, a bit more. Now I'm going to see these bands here? See what's on my brush? That's going to help ooze them out. It's good to ooze stuff out, isn't it Ian? It sure is. Now without cleaning the brush, I'm going to get a little bit of this permanent alindrin and just get it in there to get a darker vibe of this. So we'll start over here, just crisscross that in across the top, come across and maybe that corner a bit. They don't have to be evenly darkened, just so long as they're gonna bring your eye in. And we'll just get this, crisscross it into the paint. Come to the, as I'm doing this, I come to the tip of the brush and I can control light areas of that paint so it's, not, it's quite easy to control where you want it and then stroke it. And when I look back in my camera lens, hopefully I can see a little bit of warmth, afternoon, darkness up there, I don't know, we've got that vibe happening. Now before that dries, I wouldn't mind getting a couple of clouds in it. All right, I've got me fan brush. It's a hog bristle fan brush. That's my go-to brush to stamp on the footprint of my cloud. And I'm gonna show you how to make beautiful acrylic clouds. My opening is going to be here, so I'll start from there. You saw me do this sky. It's wet. You need it wet. This paint here on this fan brush has no retarder in it. I'll come from about here, and I want to get V shapes to try and create that look that's coming over our head. Crisscross it. Carry on. It's starting to 
wear out now. Everything that's coming into this brush now is turning powder blue. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, grab yourself a blending brush and a kitchen wipe, a kitchen towel. Uh, this bottom bit I'll straighten up, put a bum on it, get it in the horizon area there. There we go, just like that. Wipe it as I go. And I wanna just stamp out the brush marks, but slowly participate the top of it out into nothing, leaving the bottom, if anything, a bit harder, because this is up over our head, so to speak. Wipe your brush as you go, otherwise you're just gonna make it one even blob of a cloud. You want it uneven, brighter areas and duller areas. You're twisting, you're adding turmoil. So many of my regular viewers would see me do this, but if you're a new viewer, Take on board how I'm doing it and you'll be able to do this as well and you'll be turning your clouds into absolute bullshit. It's so easy. Here we go, I'm just kind of making a bum there so I can put some darkness in that. Tickle the tops. Got a cloud there, that's not bad. Now I wouldn't mind something out this side. I'm just gonna simply grab another fan brush so I don't have to waste time drying, wiping and washing that other one. And from here, I wanna kind of do the same, wedge it out from skinny to big and off the painting. See what I've done there? Wedge it out like that. And the same principle, work it, tickle the tops, leave the bottom hard, but tickle the top and blend it out into oblivion there into your sky. Just like that. You can do it, you can do it. Drag some life across it if you want like that, if you feel. And hopefully, when we got the business here, it'll look like they're coming over your head. This color here that we got, that gray, we can grab some of that. Find the bottom of your cloud, just here and there, don't go overboard with it, because it's the same color here, you don't want it to clash. I want a bit of this about there, and I want the base of this cloud, this color. Okay, see what I'm doing? I'm bringing the base along an uneven, thick line across the bottom, but I'm also kind of fingering up some dark bits. And you can probably do something like that in this cloud here somewhere. Practice how a cloud should look. And if you're happy with the vibe of it all, you've done it. There we go, that'll do. I wanna grab that blending brush again. And simply, I wanna to come to this edge, cornered edge of the brush here. I want to get that bottom reasonable, touching it, dancing it, there we go, it didn't take much, and kind of leave the heaviness there, but you're softening the edges into that white, okay? And you've kind of created some kind of weather within your clouds, let's say. Is that what you can call it, weather? There we go, this looks like you're looking underneath. You can even, if you're really, if you're advanced, you can even add more deeper weather into that if you want. But see, I'm just softening, I'll use my finger here, watch. I'm just softening that gray back into the cloud. That's what I'm doing with my brush. Just to participating it out there, like that. And we can see a bit of weather within our cloud. Now all you do to finish them off is add some simple yumminess. I have me white and I wanna put a little bit of yellow in there, just to make it a powdery baby yellow, powder yellow, baby yellow, lemon yellow, just something like that so it's not pure white, it's got actual sunlight hitting it somewhere. I see this vibe in my sky, that's why I'm giving it to use today. And I wanna find just, I don't want it underneath, this is the top half now. Sculpturing it in, coming towards some of that gray, bit out there. Into the cloud there, bit up there, it's just getting hit by light. I'll put that down and I'll blend that. I wanna just sit that yellow so gingerly into the cloud and it's gonna actually give it that third 3D dimensional look with a bit of luck. And you'll see it's just adding sunlight hitting the top of it. But try not to have them looking like just thick blobs. I'm gonna look in my monitor. I'm happy with that. I don't like that hard bit there, I'll distort that. And I wanna do the same here. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. See, that retarder and that soft body white paint I put in there before, it's allowed all this to stay wet longer, like the oil artists get their opportunity to do theirs because they can have theirs open for so long and 
have fun with it, but we've only got a certain window with acrylic paints. And the same again with that. Soften those hard edges down. Just look in your lens or squint your eyes until it looks like light hitting it. And that's how easy clouds are. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, you're making that look too easy, Ian, that's because I've done a hell of a lot of practice, many, many years. And if you put a lot of practice and effort in it, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it. Never trust a man that says, trust me. But if an artist says, trust me, you trust him. All right, and I told you that for nothing. We've got our sky there. I put nothing here because I'm gonna have some foreground there. If I want, I could probably put some horizon -y clouds there if I want. I was gonna do this off camera, but I thought I'd better show you what I'm doing. I'm just putting a horizon cloud there. I've just got the pure white. This is still wet, this polluted color here. And I'm just making my own thickness here and there, coming along in a line like so. And I'll probably stop somewhere here because like I said, I'm gonna have trees there. Okay, see, see the shape I've put there. Keep it in cahoots with your horizon line, okay? And then all you do is you leave the top there. Now see how we push the tops into nothing up here? Down here, I like to tickle the tops, but leave them quite visibly hard. So I'm just tapping it, okay? Tapping there. Let the turmoil, light and dark bits happen, but at the same time, pull it and twist it into that purpley horizon colour and bring it down into nothing and you'll get a kind of faded down horizon cloud on your horizon there and it, this looks not bad I reckon yeah. Now the next thing we want to do before we dry it we'll put the watercolour in there just by grabbing this craft paint and I call it craft paint but that's soft body it's got a bit of retarder in there still this part's got not much in it and I want to get this pushed up to that colour there, okay. You don't need a big thin coat of it, just some, I mean a big thick coat of it, just something there like that. And we'll make the colour up for the horizon line. Now, what colour do we make our water? We're gonna make it the sky colour reflections and then as, as we add our land, we can add that into the water as we go. So I'm grabbing some of this colour again, that's still there. So I'll get that to about here somewhere, just getting the, vibe of it there pull it down getting it in i just mixed up a bit more because i ran out so i'm just getting that to that part there there we go just evaporate it there wipe your brush i'm not, I'm not going to wash it i'll just wipe it and then we'll get the blue color there that way we've got our blue sky color. i'm just picking up that cerulean blue and i want to get this pushed across. Now see how that's gliding across that canvas? That's because I put that white paint there first. Now I'm going to wipe the brush. There's too much paint on there just so as I can doctor those two pieces together. The horizon reflection colour and that sky colour. So now I want to just control how I get them vibing together like so. Play with it. And then I can get a bit of the white just to make up for some cloud reflection so I'll just pick simply pick some up put it there like so and maybe something down here lighter and I'll just water fire that they don't have to be anything particular because we're going to have tree reflections here and a lot of that's probably going to be covered up but at least it's there now to make things easy I'm going to grab this color here to create my dark it's a cerulean blue and the quadacridone magenta and I want to just mix up a quite a dark vibe of that I'm just going to use my flat brush that I'm going to Put it on the canvas with so i want it from about here let's say there my horizon's there so i want this coming a bit lower a little bit lower so from about there and then i want to bring that up i'm going to use my bullshit stick so i can get the base of this reasonably good so i want that what i do I rest this on there and I can pull along in a straight line real easy. So I'll get the line straight for starters, but I want it a bit swervy. So I'm coming down like that. See what I did there? And this is the baseline of me mid-ground. Now I dried it. I did say I dried it. I think I said that. Now I can get rid of that bullshit stick and start adding the top of that. So simply coming across... I want to come up here 
I want to block it in and then I'll pick up my tree brush that I'm going to use to get the, the shapes what I want. So I want that coming up here. There we go. About there. So I've picked up my fill, but now I've blocked that in much as I can. And I want a lot of this, I want that more thicker out here. This is gonna create the detailed edge, just like so, off that blob. This is gonna, when the painting's dried and finished, this purple is gonna look dark. So you don't push too far down. If you push too far, you get a big, ugly, weird looking canopy top. Find that pressure, that's why I say practice. And now I'm gonna gradually come out from the heavy bit so it's not such a stark contrast, not such a heavy drop in the two lines. It's a bit more, it's not such a solid line you see there. That's what I'm trying to say. Get some of this now and pull it down in the water, but it doesn't have to be the same. Is that water dry? Did I dry it? Yes, I did. I don't think it's 100% dry, I'll see. So what I wanna do, I wanna start from here that's where I want it. I want it there like so, and I want to just start pulling this down like so. Keeping the horizon line area level, which is there, and keeping this all scratched. So I'm going here now, pulling that top bit down on a scratch motion, see? Do the same here. Find your, your shape, pull it down just like that, scratching it up and then block that in and pull all that down. This is gonna have greens and highlights, so don't worry. Pull it down and then block the rest of this in, like so. And then find your horizon line and pull down from that. So all that pull down is the one brush stroke, same brush stroke, not different. Up there, it doesn't matter, because that's gonna be detailed a lot better than what it is. This is just a reflection. Okay, I want to grab some burn umber and black, and I want to blackulate me burn umber so it's quite dark, but it's got that brown vibe still. And along here, I want to create the actual land before the tree. So I'll get some of this. Now I'm going to twist my brush like that, bring it back, but on the horizon line, twist again. I want it a little bit wider over this side a bit. So it's with the horizon line, moving along. That can, doesn't have to be so much there. And this can come a lot more over this way like that. Now what I want to do is simply put some stones, rocks and boulders in here. Just simply grab that colour you mix and just simply add a bit of white to it. Simple. You can even put some yellow if you want. Let's see what yellow does. It'll make it a bit more of a honeycomb rock colour I suppose. And work out where you want some pockets of stones. I probably want a few... Just long ones like that somewhere, gather in there, within the black. Get some up there. Some of these can be bigger because they're closer, like that. You could probably put a little bit of that vibe in the water if you want, just a little bit. Now I'm grabbing just the pure black on that same brush. Look at this and just kind of see where I might need, get that on there, some darks. I probably want some lumping up under me trees here, which I did that line a bit flat. So, and in here I might just kind of put some other dark vibes where it's really a lot of the light colour, just like that. And some dark colours up in there, whispering off this stuff. And wash this brush and then we're just going to simply highlight those rocks. So I think we'll use the yellow to highlight it. Grab that same colour. And just start getting these scalloped from behind towards the front. I did grab some burn umber because I feel there's not enough brown in there. It's too black and highlighty colour. So I'm just scattering some of the burn umber through all that as well just to change the vibe of it up a bit. I've got the crows outside 
swearing in the sky, crowing along. They sound like they're saying the F word. Ah, that's the Australian crow for those who haven't heard of them. And simply find the bits near the water now. Our water line somewhere here. And highlight somewhere the light would be coming down on them because the tree's going to shadow the rest of them. Now see those light ones only, just, see I did one there. Just get some of them and pull them down a bit. Just a bit here and there within that reflection. Now I've just simply got forest green and my yellow ochre. I want to get this yellow ochre a dead wood colour, so I'm going to grab some of the black. A little bit of the black, not too much. And just try and see what vibe I get going here. There we go, look at that, it's kind of graded a bit. Because I want to add the dead sticked, dead foliage colour within that trees before I add the, the green colour and the highlight, okay? Now, mainly where the, the shrubs hit the rocks, that's probably where I want some of this dead stuff. Leave that purple hovering above the rocks there. You can have some coming over though. Uh, so we're going to create depth. And this is just going to radiate up a bit, just like that, into our canopy. And I wouldn't mind getting this vibe just put on there like so, just where you feel it is. And that'll do. Now I've got me forest green here and I want to put a little bit of my cadmium yellow medium in there just to turn the lights on so you'll see it and then I'll add a lot more later on for highlighting it. So I've got it the vibe I want. I'll get the brush wet a bit so as it's going to come off the brush and onto the canvas. Because just remember if you're starting your art journey and you're having trouble with your paint coming off your brush, it's too thick and thin paint will stick easier onto thicker previous paint. Now I want to get me trees in here, so that's nice and dark. I'm going to sit on the top of that colour and then start bringing my foliage in, my canopy, whatever you want to call it. I've been doing a lot of these trees lately, but most landscape paintings do have trees in them. I do a lot of landscapes. Um, I don't stick to like like some people I've noticed, they do just lots of mountain, different mountain themes. Uh, I do the odd mountain, but not a lot. If you like what I'm doing, hit the thumbs up. Tell me who you are, where you're from. We're just using that purple that we put on as a base coat to add depth within these trees. Now we need to get some of this, just put it on and scratch it down just scratch it down like that you don't want to see much of the purple in this reflection you want to see most of the um the green now here and there just so long as it's pulled down in an up and down motion not left and right or wiggly wobbly because on the, on the painting that's green but i'm looking in my lens it's looking a bit different very dark Now, I've got what's in my brush and a dob of cadmium yellow medium up here. Okay, I want to mix up my yellow green, get a vibe of that going. Okay, my camera's on quite an angle there, so I hope it's not skewing the view too much. Now, I want to get this now and start giving these trees their colour and shape. And the previous two colours we just put on there has pretty much made the depth for all of this. Okay, I'm pretty much coming from the left no, from the right and bowing all these into the painting. Now dry your work. I don't think I dried this, but it's it's not too wet, so it's not too bad. I want to cover that island up there, that rock face or whatever, that bit of rocky shoreline it's, this island's got. Get above there. 
come down into your work. We need to get some of this now within here, not too, oh, not too much. Just bits and bobs scattered throughout that forest green, get some of this scattered throughout it. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is grab the rest of this cadmium yellow light and make it a lot more yellow. Don't need too much of this, and probably can put a little bit of white in there. Mint it up a bit, there we go. Damp your brush. And we'll just put a little bit of this, about 15% of the area. Work out where you feel you might want some bits brighter than the other. I might want a little bit scampering from here, just coming down over that rock face there, and I'll replicate that into the reflections straight away so I don't lose it. Not too hard in the reflections. And then I'll come here, grey something down here maybe, come that way, pick up some more, keep loading your brush so it's doing what you want it to do, not what you're hoping it's going to do. How are we looking in the monitor? That's okay, it's looking quite vibey. Uh, I want something Nice thin brush strokes, some, some light down here. And I'm going to do the same again in the water. Pulling it down gently and gingerly. Now see what I've done. I've just done a bit there, a bit there and a bit here. That's what I want to do. I don't want to go over the whole lot. Sometimes we can go over the whole lot with every darn colour and we're just turning our painting into absolute snot. So here we go, down there. And what I will do, because this is far away out here, I'll make this just a whole lot lighter and brighter and glary, and it can come back gently into the more detailed area of the growth. You gotta to learn to stop what you're doing when you're doing stuff because you can just get carried away and not stop. And we've all done that, eh? There we go. Now look out there, look at that. There's a bit of depth missing. I wanna just grab a brush that's doable to get some of this blacky brown. You want it to be black, but I don't want it to be pure black, so I'm gonna um, put brown with it. So where do you think the water's hitting? I'm thinking here. Get some of this off the brush and kind of gingerly come up, scratch down. Get a dark area there where the water's hitting the land there. Come up, come down. You don't have much on your brush. You don't want it big hard lines. You want it kind of smoky and blurry, but just enough to sh indicate there's depth and darkness where the water's hitting the land. And if you're, where are we? Another thing you can do, which I might do once I've had a look in my monitor, is um, just see up the top bit, is there anywhere there that might need some depth defying depth bit there, like watch what I do here, there, there. Tinsely tangled within there, some darkness, and that can be replicated in the reflections as well. So we'll say about a bit of darkness here. It's just light, scratchy, airy darkness, enough just to tease it with that darkness of shadow, and you can put that down there as well, in a long, long pull down way. I'm grabbing that dark black brown that I just used on my script liner and I probably want something, the light at the top, see if I can pull a trunk out here. A dark trunk coming up into nothing. There we go, what did that do? I want to be able to get this in there. So I want the main one there and he's sort of coming out of that dark bit of the bush there. 
right next to it. I like to do two. There we go. And we could probably put something here. I'm trying to create some kind of swamp tree. That'll do. Now down here I've got my dark perylene green. Use the darkest green you've got, or you can even use a black if you want, but I've got perylene green, so I'm going to make use of it. And I want a bit of yellow in it just to turn the lights on a bit, because I want this to be a dark, different tree. Now I want that tree, I want to try and, there we go. I want to try and get, there we go, those kind of leaves on this tree. So I'm using this, once was a flat brush, now is a munted up brush. And I want to leave that fork there, but have kind of bowls in the right shape of this tree coming down. See why I've painted, not why I've painted, why I've dried the painting? Because it's gonna hang over there and come to this bit of a trunk there that you put. It can come across that. And we can probably bring a lot of it back here somewhere. Point up into the sky a bit, there we go. Now we've just gotta highlight that, dry it and highlight it. Before you do that though, <laughs> we best come down here and put some of this in our water as well. Otherwise it might look a bit wrong. It's just pretty much from there. We've got a little bit of a sky window there, so I'm just gonna make sure I'll at least leave that in there, okay? Now to highlight that, we're grabbing more of this yellow, brighter yellow green we mixed and we want to get this vibe going. It's still going to be on a dark side, but enough to stand out on that dark tree we just put there, okay? Let's see where we are. Get it right to the top there a bit. A bit there, just a bit there at the top. I want to bring this. Let's, I'm sort of putting it on and grinding it. And I want to come in front of that, leaving a darker bit there. Let me look in my monitor. I'm looking, I can see, yes. Bit over here. Nothing too much in front of that stuff, otherwise it's gonna clash. You leave that dark stuff right there. Because I want this mainly out in the open where the light's hitting it. Little bits and bobs, just like that. There we go. And maybe one bit here to set it back. Okay. And we can get this vibe if we need it. Is it going to make a difference? Yes. Put some of this vibe into the reflection as well. I might go a little bit more white into that. So I've just put some white on my brush. I'll pull it over here. Right on the edge there. Whoa, easy. I could see that. Today's Saturday, I keep thinking it's Sunday, I don't know why. Just the top of this lighter colour there. I said just the edges, but I'm getting carried away here. Calm that, calm down. You nearly swore then, Ian, didn't you? I nearly did, but I held back, I held back. There we go, there we go. Replicate that in there, I suppose. And like, get your script liner if you want. If you feel that trunk needs a bit of white, put some of the white into that blacky brown color that you mixed and work out where you might want some light hitting that trunk. If you want some light hitting it, I'm gonna go at the top half of it, I suppose. We have a something down here. I don't know, hopefully that's looking the part. If it ain't, well, it doesn't look the part then. Okay, I've got the perylene green again, and I want to get a tree here, some kind of um, bush just coming off the painting, but lower down on the horizon line, like I said, and coming around. That can be all darkened up. This is in silhouette, okay? And then 
pull this down where you think it's meeting the water, just like that. I want kind of an umbrella -y swooping down, sweeping shape here, just like that. Coming down into the painting, a couple of tears, a tear there, maybe a tear here, bulk it up a bit. Some branches are gonna silhouette this and make it look the part as well. We'll get a backbone of it here somewhere. There we go, just like that. They're floating in the sky at the moment, but they're quite easy to do. You can do this. We can probably have some light bits tinseling backwards and forwards here, just coming off within the painting. We can join these up with trunks as well. And this is just gonna push everything that we've put there back. This is just simple perylene green. Now coming from here, there's gonna be another bigger piece. Get the tops twisted up and out so they look gorgeous. And having this in silhouettes just gonna make more sense. We can line it up with appropriate twigs and branches. go I'm happy with that now I want to grab my script liner use the same paint ink it up a bit I'd like to get this about that thick coming into this body of foliage okay just like that I need a bit more water in the paint I can feel it wanting to break okay we've done that and now we're going to simply give it a main I'll give it if I get that dag off there I'll give it a main rib somewhere in into the piece here like so I've got too much water now so it's coming down in there we can come up into that and down into this just like that I like mine if anything more straight so I'll just do that I need more paint on the tip of the brush. There we go. Because some of them do end up in the open. Just like that. Boom. Okay. Probably have something barking up here. Keep it straight. Come right off the painting if you want, Ian. We can pick up that other brush and stamp some of this stuff back and forth if we want. Okay. From that thick bit, I would like to get just a bit more grunt. I'm just finishing it off with the minutest ones pulling out of it all. Just making sure some of them cross, cross over and giving a nice fine detailed edge on everything. Maybe going a bit too much here, but you get the gist of what I mean. Now I had a thought just for the painting's sake, I might put a bit of a glare here. Let's say some of the sun may be glaring there. I don't know whether it makes sense to the painting or not, but I'm just picking up some of my thicker structured titanium white onto a round hog bristle brush and I'll get most of it off. And I want it about, let's say here, just something I can put a bit of a, a glare in the sky, let it fade. So let's say about here, straight in a straight line. I want some of this just coming in a straight line, breaking up as we go. There we go. Now I do want to put a film of water on top of the water to so sink the reflections down. The best way I like is I'll grab a bit of glaze and a good sharp flat brush, something you can sharp the edges with. And I just want a touch of white in there, not much. So I'll pull some of this out, I'll brush mix this on its own, and then I'll slowly put a little, oh, that's plenty, too much plenty, that's more than enough. Just to get a bit of water surface hitting the banks and sinking our reflections down. So the best way as well to do that is using the bullshit stick. Start on your, start out here, just get it, creasing against the bank here in the middle of all that black paint that you put there before. Up and down, it's all up and down. It's not a straight line, that line there against the water, the, the, the land there. And then just gingerly 
we can probably come across the horizon as well where we can depict where the water and the sky meet there we go and we can use this to sink that sink some of the reflections down now gingerly come across them all with these little fine but level lines this stick will help you keep them level come right from the water and over them come right past and over them that's the best way and scatter them zigzag them sink that trunk down in the water there there right past it right through it and right past it just like that just sinking some of this stuff down, sinking that reflection down there that we made of our sun. And it's given a film. Wow, here we go, all the way across there. Now be careful with your glaze. If you dig into it too much, it'll rip right into your paint and turn it to, to buggery. There we go. Now, I'll put a signature way down here and then we'll whack a frame on that and see how she looks. And I want to thank everybody on my YouTube channel as a member and my Patreon who becomes patrons who support me every month. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. The links are in the description below if you want to become a member or a patron. Well, the member, you just hit the join tab below. And we'll see what this looks like in a frame. But before we put a frame on it, I had a message comment from a Shirley and she said can we actually because I usually put the frame on this and you see how it looks like I do this right okay and you see how it looks but she wants to see which was a good comment good question can we see you pull the tape off to see the edge of the canvas so I'm going to do that now and I've deliberately taped the canvas in a way so it'll stay up there when I pull this tape off so we're going to get this off just so you can see the edge of the canvas there, okay? I've got some corner pieces here to hold it. Hopefully it does hold. There we go. And one more across the top. I'm using a pointy knife to get under it. It's the easiest way for me, especially while I'm filming. Well... <clears throat> And there you go, Shirley. I hope that made you happy. You get an idea how the finished canvas looks with the tape pulled off it. Now we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. There you go. That's not too shabby. The frame does set it off. We've got this thing, this tree here in silhouette, pushing everything back. We've got some reflections going. Put your vibe, whatever you want in there, because I know you can do it. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine and feel free to subscribe. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you. Need a new glove. <laughs>